In this case, we have the differential equation dy dx equals x squared over y squared. Um, and we want to find, first of all, we want to find the general solution. So therefore, we need to go ahead and solve for y. All right? So the first thing we want to do is separate the variables. And you guys can see, to get rid of this dx on this side, I can just multiply both sides by dx on both sides. And then here, to get rid of the y squared, or at least get the y over there, I can multiply both sides by y squared. So when doing that, when you multiply by dx on both sides, and if you multiply by y squared on both sides, it's also kind of like doing um, uh, cross product, right? And therefore, you get y squared dy equals x squared dx, right? And that's very important. That is a separation of variables, which I talked about is usually one of those first steps and points that we're going to be looking for, right? So I separated the variables. Now, the next step is we're going to want to integrate. Because we're trying to find this general solution, so we want to solve for y, so I'm going to integrate. Let's go ahead and integrate both sides. So when I integrate here, I'm going to have a, let's see, 1 third y to the cubed um, plus c. And then this one's going to be 1 third x cubed plus c. Let's call that c2. Now, from here on out, I'm just going to find the c, and I'm just going to combine them into one common c over here. Okay, so. I showed this step just to remind you guys of that. However, there's no like kind of bonus points for this. Um, if you just want to go into that form, that's perfectly fine. All right. Now, here's where it kind of gets interesting with the C. So I'm just going to skip from here. We got to solve for y. We got to find this general solution, right? So I need to solve for y. So if I need to solve for y, what should I undo? And what should I undo first? I should multiply by one third, right? So, or I'm sorry, I need to undo the 1 third, which would be multiplying by 3. So I multiply by 3 on both sides. So therefore I get, let me go and put it right here. So I get y cubed equals x cubed plus 3c. Right? Now, does it really matter what 3c is? Because 3c is just going to be c, c right? It kind of like absorbs that c. So we can just really call this you know, 3c, but yeah, in reality, it's just a constant. It doesn't matter if it's constant multiplied by 3 or not. right? Um, then on the next step is now we need to undo the, this. So we need to undo the cube. So we're going to cube root both sides. And therefore, I get y is equal to the cube root of x cubed plus c. Now, in this case, can we just like not worry about the c? Um, yeah. Well, couldn't you break it apart for like cube root of x plus cube root of c? Yeah. You can't break it apart because it's separated by addition, subtraction. So yeah, it's, it's going to be the error. So here, the c makes all the difference. Okay. So this is what we call our general solution, and that's part a. Now, to find the particular solution. Um, we are given a point, and guys, can we find a particular suit? Like, can we just plug in the point? Yeah. Pretty simple, right? So negative 2 equals the cube root of 0, uh, zero cubed plus c. Yeah. Right? Yeah. OK, not looking too bad. Negative 2 equals the cube root of c. Now to undo the cube root, I just need to cube. So that's my value of c. So now to find the particular solution, I just need to plug that back into my equation. There you go. Dang it. It is a negative 8. So you've got to be very, very careful with that. Thank you. I was like, you know what? I mentioned that in my head, too, when I was getting to it. Please be careful with that, guys. A lot of people will get to the powers because we've used like squared powers so many times or even powers so many times. They'll forget that this is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is going to make a negative number. So yes, that's x cubed minus 8. Okay.